history of having our sexuality controlled by the state, our communities, our families, and our partners. Another world is possible. We can be, and we must be, the trailblazers for the movement. It is our duty to fight. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and protect each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Why does the right deliberately choose gender oppression as the fast track strategy to ensuring domination? Why? Did the right create a religious arm that would focus on reproductive rights, sexuality, and family, and that it would connect those to the idea of patriotism? When we talk about the issue of gender justice, we often are relegated to uh, talking about what is the status of women. But we don't ask ourselves the more fundamental question, which is, how does heteropatriarchy keep white supremacy and colonialism in place? <laughs> heteropatriarchy is fundamental to empire because patriarchy is what naturalizes social hierarchy. That is, just as men are supposed to naturally rule over women, so too should the elites of a society naturally rule everyone else. This is why in the history of Indian genocide, the first task that colonizers took on was to integrate patriarchy into native communities. The primary tool used by colonists is sexual violence. What sexual violence does for colonialism and white supremacy is render women of color inherently rapeable, our lands inherently invadable, and our resources inherently extractable. Feminism is the resisting of the colonizing of your mind even as they colonize our bodies, our families, and our communities. Because feminism is the resisting of the exploitation of our labor, our reproduction, and our sex. Latino women coming from Mexico, El Salvador, other countries in Latin America face danger just in getting here. What they face in the process of immigrating, it's a nasty business. If they don't get raped on their way, they come to the border. Those border agents, man, are they helpful if you just sort of give it a little bit? And it's always a possible that happened there at the border and the coyotes of Brigham in. And there's a whole exposure of Latino women to danger just coming here from another country where we won't say what's going on there. Then they get here, what kinds of jobs do they get? Uh, uh, uh. A lot of them are working as domestic workers and if they have a, a male boss, you're lucky not to be asked to do certain things for that male boss. If we look at the intersections of gender, race, and class oppression, what does our perspective tell us about liberation for everybody? What do we want? When do we want? Now. What do we want? Now. When do we want? Now. As a queer disabled woman of color belonging to queer communities, I am here to say that my queerness does not carry any less importance than my race or my disability. And ableism, heterosexism, and homophobia are deeply connected and have many, many similarities. Our issues and our bodies are seen as unimportant, burdensome, and get pushed out, ignored, and forgotten. Ableism sets the stage for queer people to be institutionalized as mentally disabled, for communities of color to be understood as less capable, less smart, and less intelligent, therefore naturally fit for slave labor. It set the stage for women to be used as wombs to reproduce children when, where, and how men needed them to. Two nights ago, two trans women were almost arrested by the Atlanta police. They're organizers from New York City. All they did was go into a store and try and purchase something. And just because they were trans, the police were called. You may not have to have an analysis around transgender rights or understanding of transgender, but I do think that all of us feel strongly that we should defend trans people against the attack by the police. We have the right to be who we want to be, but we also have the right for freedom. We have 
such an ingrained idea that social hierarchy is natural that we replicate this in our own movements, whether it is the neo-colonial middle managers of the nonprofit industrial complex or the revolutionary vanguard elite. The idea is that we need patriarchs of any gender to manage and police the revolutionary family. We have social justice movements organizing around state violence, but won't address violence going on against women in their own organization. We do collective work in the public sphere, but we don't collectivize the child care, we don't collectivize our income sharing, we don't collectivize feeding ourselves. So we build a movement that's not accessible to most people. The word communal is all there. We're talking about, aren't we, getting together, changing the world together with a lot of love, a lot of courage, and a lot of respect. And I feel so much of it right here in this room. I am in solidarity with every single struggle and fight that people have here that are represented in this auditorium. I know that we get tired sometimes about the fighting, about the day-to-day -day violence that we're dealing with in our communities. I, will, I, I hope that people we continue to hold on to the fact that we're really fighting to be free. We're fighting for our liberation. There is not only one way to be in the world. We ask you to consider broadly the role of gender liberation in the struggle for freedom, justice, and equality through our bodies, our spirits, our lives, our communities, and the world.